Hi, welcome to Home Farm. Today we're reviewing the thread enabled Eve Energy Smart Plug. So we already have the previous Eve Energy Smart Plugs. Mm -hmm. Eve very kindly have sent us these ones, which are the new ones, and they are thread enabled. Mm -hmm. What does that mean and why is this so cool? These ones are all, as you said, thread enabled, which means that they actually form part of this groovy new network that's been created that allow smart home products to communicate with one, with one another. So in our case, we've got smart TRVs that we've installed throughout the house. There's uh, all other kinds of products. We've got the Eve Aqua and the Eve Weather that we're going to be installing and reviewing soon. Mm -hmm. All of these uh, devices form this thread network, uh, which is regulated initially by a HomePod Mini or an Apple 4K TV. But the Eve Energies almost work like boosters, if you like. They're not booster boosters, but you know, for people that are more familiar with maybe with Wi-Fi communications, that is kind of the kind of term that would be akin to the Eve energy. The thread is not an Eve thing. It's not an Eve, it's not. Eve and it's not an Apple initiative. It's a thread thing. It's, 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 it's like a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Correct. Thread. Now it's thread. Which has been driven by all the major players in the market. So, you know, the likes of Google and, uh, and Apple have all come together, banded together to, to help formulate this new uh, technology. Because up until this point, that has been the biggest source of frustration if you've got a smart device that's plugged in, that typically runs on Wi-Fi, and that's been great. You know, you can communicate with it, it's responsive, it's quick. But the things that are battery operated, like the TRVs, they would typically run on Bluetooth, which means that they draw very little power, but at the same time, their reach is limited, mm. uh, and they're not very responsive. When you try and change settings, it takes a while. So this is a complete game changer because it's, you know, things have become far more responsive, far quicker, while still preserving battery life. So basically, if you're not a geek and you just kind of, because you are a geek, you love it. I would describe myself as a geek. Definitely. Yes. Um, <laughs> a proud one. Uh, but if you're not, and you're somebody like me who just wants to know, it, why is it so cool? Um, you would just say that Thread is basically going to be more robust, more reliable, um, and more easier to use, more intelligent. Faster, quicker, and the network that it actually creates is extremely robust. Uh, so, you know, you often see descriptions when you read about Thread is that it's a self-healing network and it really does function like that. So, you know, when we installed the first couple of, of devices around the house, I think they're called nodes. It's a whole vocabulary to this, but you don't really have to delve into that if you don't want to. When we installed these uh, products around the house, you would see that initially, you know, one would come up saying, oh, you know, can't gain access to the Thread network and that it throws up a little, I think, red triangle that says connecting via Bluetooth. So now that has now fallen off the thread network. As soon as we started putting more of these devices around the house, some more smart plugs, more TRVs, the Eve Weathers, the Eve Aquas, that kind of thing, this network started to grow and become stronger and stronger and stronger. So unlike Wi-Fi, you know, the typical Wi-Fi network, the more stuff you connect to it, the, the slower it becomes. The weaker, yeah. And, and the weaker it becomes, where with the thread, the more items that you have on the network, the more robust the actual communication becomes. So even if one device, for whatever reason, maybe there's a, a heavy brick wall or something that you know prevents it from communicating it regularly, it will just simply bypass that and it'll just basically self-heal itself and the network will again bounce back. So it takes a bit of time, but it does work. And the, I think the, the thing that I enjoy most about it because it all happens without you even knowing that it's happening. But for someone like me who I don't really like to kind of, I just like stuff to work. I just mm -hmm. like to install it. I like the installation to be really quick, seamless. Yeah. And then I just want it to work. This basically, the thread does that. It's very um, intelligent mm -hmm. and it changes its settings as and kind of when it needs to. The thing that I've always liked about Eve, because we've been using their products now for about three years, they're very easy to use. So. From the installation, you, you actually install the, the smart plug. This will probably take you about 30 seconds to get onto your Eve app. Then you download the firmware update because there will be a new firmware update for that, which actually enables Thread to work on it. Now, as soon as that's done, it probably takes anywhere between 90 seconds to, to two minutes to actually get operational. And then you do nothing else. The, the whole Thread hmm. thing via the app just reconfigures itself and it just starts to work. If there's no HomePod or Apple 4K TV, 
there won't be a thread network. It's as simple as that. I have to say, I really like Eve products because they come really nicely packaged. They, they feel in quality of packaging, branding, mm -hmm. and also the actual products, they feel on par with Apple. They do not feel yeah. like rickety. I mean, we've had, we've had some plugs where we've actually got them out of the box yeah. from other brands, like kind of real made in China kind of brands and, and cheapo like entry level brands. You get them out and you can actually shake them. You can hear stuff Rattling. rattling inside. You're like, what is going on? Um, nothing is like that with Eve. Everything is really slick. It's really minimalist. It's really clean. It's really aesthetically pleasing, nice to look at. And the packaging is solid. It comes out. It's really nice. You feel like you've actually purchased something that's good quality um, and not just going to go straight to landfill. So I really like these. And the ones that we've had that from the previous years are still working just as flawlessly, just as good Perfect. as the first day we put them in. Um, so we're just adding to that. What I really do like about them is that they also have this button on the top of the plug. Um, so as you plug it into mm -hmm. the wall like this, um, there's a little button at the top here, very, very small. You can just see it there. And that lights up um, and you can actually then, if you're walking past a, for example, we've got a lot of these plugged into lamps. And if they are on schedules, and you can talk about mm -hmm. a little bit about the software yeah. but and the app, but if, for example, I walk into a room and I don't have my phone on me and I just want to turn that lamp on quickly, I can just walk up to the plug and press that button and, and it goes on. Really nice, simple, and easy to access. The button is easy to access. It's not on the bottom, on the side, weird places. I've seen them on other devices before. Nice and easy, and it just comes on. So I like to have that dual control. Mm -hmm. For me, the other biggest benefit about this is actually the schedules that you can create. Yeah. Uh, the actual schedule making functionality of it is, is fantastic. Um, I've used these to even help configure our fridge uh, so that I could brew my, my homemade lagers. Uh, using the the Eve room. Yeah, that's um, how geeky you are. Yeah, that's how geeky <laughs> I am. Um, but you know, you, you can just because the fridge itself wouldn't be able to actually you know switch itself on and off to get to the temperature that I needed it to. So I use the smart plug to do that. So the scheduling is very robust. You mentioned lamps. Uh, it's got a fantastic feature where you can set it at sunset mode or sunrise mode. But beyond that, you can actually move it backwards or forwards of that. In the UK, it gets dark quite quickly. So but if you only switch your lamps on at sunset. Um, you know, it's already dark by then, so you can actually move it back 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, depending on where you are. So you can customize it exactly to when you actually do want a lamp to come on. And that's great from a sustainability perspective because yeah. you're not just, you know, running a lamp unnecessarily. It is actually coming on at a time that you actually want it to come on and it goes off equally so. Yeah, a lot of the other ones that we've seen, um, the apps and the software that have come with other brands just has, do you want this um, yeah. to come on at sunset or sunrise? Um, but as you said, that's just not necessarily the right time for something to come on because no. then you're kind of eliminating, forgetting about dusk and you know dawn mm -hmm. when it's still twilight. So if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. And also we do have other Eve product reviews. We've got the Eve Weather, Eve Aqua and Eve Thermo. So we'll also link up whichever one we've got up ready. We'll link that up <laughs> above. And the other really amazing feature that I like, again, <laughs> drawing on my geekiness, uh, is the fact that it's also a power meter. So yeah. the one thing about Eve products is they collect data. The data that you collect is, is your data. It stays with you. They, they don't share that data or, or, or even have access to it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, which I do feel like with other products, other brands, they're very into data sharing, aren't mm -hmm. they? And data collecting. And then we don't really know where that data goes. Yeah. Um, but certainly with Eve, that is one of their um, highest values, core values as a company is that they really um, want to respect. And, and it's on all their boxes that always says 100% privacy on, on absolutely every product that you actually get from them. The data that it collects can be very, very useful, especially, yeah. on, especially on the plugs. Uh, because if you have got um, maybe a device that consumes a lot of electricity and it is connected to an Eve smart plug, you can actually know exactly how many kilowatts that actual product is consuming in real time over the course of you know one day, one month, one year, whatever. I mean, it, it draws everything for you. It can even tells you how much money you've actually spent running that actual product. So wow. you know that is really cool for for people that are taking their electricity a little bit more seriously. Well, I think a lot of people, especially this year with the energy crisis, mm -hmm. I think the majority of us are very acutely aware that mm -hmm. our electricity tariffs are skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, so if you've got concerns of, you know, maybe you've got, for example, a drinks fridge or mm -hmm. something that, you know, you're just thinking, mm, I'm not really sure how much that actually yeah. consumes. You know, even if you didn't want to necessarily install Eve plugs all over your house, 
to just get a couple of these and to then just plug them in for a week and just monitor that mm -hmm. um, specific um, device or the fridge or whatever it is, that product. And to be able to then get that data and go, okay, wow, yeah. this thing is really an energy sucker. It's just chewing mm -hmm. through my electricity, then you could potentially think, okay, so I'm going to keep this on there and I'm actually going to just set a schedule. Um, Cause maybe, you know, for example, if it's like a power tool or a, a battery mm -hmm. charger or something like that, you don't need it on 24 yeah. hours a day. So, you know, then you can actually get control over it. So I think that they are just really useful, aren't they? If you have got a lamp connected to a smart plug, for example, you could even play around with automations to be even more kind of sustainable. So for example, if you have got an, an EVE home camera that you've set up in a room, it can actually detect motion and it'll actually then turn a lamp on if you walk into the actual room. Wow. So again, you, know, you don't have to necessarily go down the scheduling route. You can play around with automations. It gives you a lot of flexibility. We've actually experimented with that uh, on our EVE strip lights. Yes, they're not connected to the smart plug. It worked fantastically well. So there's absolutely no reason why you can't set up lamps throughout the house uh, to actually work uh, in conjunction with the smart plug. I would just say that we also experimented, we got some um, smart bulbs um, sent to us a few months ago. And I kind of thought that actually maybe a smart bulb would be really um, fantastic mm. for me personally. And that I would really prefer it to a smart plug because I thought, okay, well, this is great because it's I'm losing that bulkiness at the plug point and I'm having this bulb come on and the fact that you can change the color mm. and, and do the tones and you know all that kind of thing, warm light, cool light, etc. I thought that I was gonna really prefer that as a product. I really did not prefer it as a product. <laughs> I found it to be a real headache. Um, I didn't feel that the, the lumens were bright enough. I didn't like the colors. But more importantly than that, I actually felt like I lost control of the actual lamp. Um, so, you know, you know, you had to turn it on mm. with your actual phone um, or you had to set a schedule. But then, for example, if you walked into that room and you didn't have your phone on you, you couldn't turn the lamp on. You couldn't turn the bulb on, um, which was really annoying. And um, the ones that we had weren't actually Siri enabled either. So we couldn't even yeah. voice activate things. They were all Alexa based and we don't have that. I actually prefer the fact that, you know, as I said, I've got the on off button here, which I think is really nifty uh, and I do actually use a lot. Um, and then also you've got the scheduling and, uh, and the things on your phone. So I actually much prefer a smart plug mm -hmm. to a smart bulb. Um, so if you're actually thinking of that and maybe you're thinking, oh, should I get a smart bulb or a smart plug? That was just my two cents. And the one thing I was surprised about is that the smart bulbs actually consume double the amount of power as a conventional LED bulb. So oh, really? yeah, a normal LED bulb, usually about three kilowatts uh, of, of power that they use. Mm. The smart bulbs were about six or seven. So they, they do draw more power. So maybe the winner is the smart plug. So I hope that you have found this video useful and interesting. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.